Hey, what's up guys? Uh, let me know how the audio sounds because I am trying I'm trying to have music playing and for you guys to hear me. And I wasn't quite sure how to do it. As long as I'm not echo echoing, let me know because I had to turn off USB mix minus. I'm a little worried that you're hearing an echo. Cool. All right, Dr. Elo says it sounds good. Awesome. I was getting a little worried. I couldn't get the music playing. You gotta have music, right? Um, music was good too. Now it's off. Oh, it is off. Let's should be playing. Give me a second. Never played music during the stream, right, guys? So um, you should be hearing it a little bit. Um, let me know. But if you're not, you're not, and we'll just uh, we'll deal with it. Maybe I just have it too low. Perfect. Okay. Well, guys, welcome to the stream. Happy Friday and uh, good morning or afternoon or good evening, no matter where you're at in, in the world. And if you're watching the replay, you know, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you guys were watching the replay down below. And as always, if you want to uh, sh uh, show your support, there's the link to my buy me a coffee page. You can buy me a coffee. Um, just a little bit too loud. Ha ha ha. All right, let's try. Let's try turning it down now. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Let me know if that's a. Uh, that's barely hitting the meter. So hopefully that's good. Okay. So let's get to a little bit of housekeeping. Let me clean up my windows here. Uh, I usually have like a five minute timer so I can get like things rocking and rolling, but uh, apparently I didn't change it from the last stream and it was only a two minute timer. So, um, let me move some stuff around here. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Leo, for letting me know. That's good. I really do appreciate you guys being here early uh, for the stream to help me make sure everything sounds good for, you know, everybody else that comes comes later on. Because, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully people come later on. Um, so, real quick, so we're going to go over how I build out my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K rig we're gonna build it out go over all the parts some stuff that i use some stuff that i don't use all the time but for certain occasions you can ask any questions you have about it or content creation in general uh, i think the most important thing to note though is when you're building a camera rig right you need to build it for the specific job so this is kind of my go-to for most jobs but there are variations depending on on what i'm shooting because sometimes sometimes it doesn't make sense to rig it out right sometimes it does so we're gonna go over all that um, but real quick I wanted to share with you guys um, if you don't know um, oh there's my soundtrack hey we launched uh, oh hold on all right there we go we launched merch for the podcast so if you if this is your first time here I have a podcast called the high podcast where I sit down and speak with uh, creatives and entrepreneurs, well, all creatives are entrepreneurs in my book, uh, and talk to them about their journey, how they got started, the struggles along the way, what keeps them going, lessons they've learned, really to help you guys uh, benefit from their experience so you too can just get started creating whatever it is you want to create. That's what the show is all about. And we launched merch that kind of like represents the show. So I'm super excited about it. 
Uh, here's like my favorite shirt, the hashtag just start, because that's what the podcast is all about. Just getting started. It's really cool. It comes in a lot of different colors. Um, I went with press and sew. They make a lot of shirts for creators and I am, let me tell you guys, I am super, super picky when it comes to, oh, hold on. You guys aren't even seeing me in the, in the bottom here. Let's, let's figure this out. Um, add a little camera overlay. Where's my overlays? We're gonna figure this out guys. Show overlays, add camera overlay. Why is that not going to me? Hey, there I am. All right. So, Press and Sew. They make awesome shirts for a lot of different creators. Um, very, very high quality. And I am very picky when it comes to my shirts. Very picky. I hate 100% cotton because it just shrinks and you never know how it's going to fit after you wash it. Like, I hate it. So these shirts are all tri-blend. So they're that really soft kind of almost, not silky, but very, very soft material. Um, they're not going to shrink, kind of stretch a little bit. Like, they're super nice. So, um, yeah, we got three different logos with four different colors white black uh gray and kind of like a heather mustard uh which is really cool so we got what the what are you waiting for hashtag just start we got just start and of course the podcast uh logo and we got a hat like all black you know all black hat well just start uh on the side so super cool just want to i'm excited about it like i've never had merch before so i wanted to share it with you guys um so oh and the best thing about like press and sew, they're super affordable. I mean, $25 for a t-shirt. I mean, that's, I mean, that's like, that's cheap to me for a t-shirt. Anyway, that's enough about shirts. Um, I, and I know, I know a man, uh, Peter here, uh, ordered one. He'll be the first one in, uh, Europe to have one. So awesome, man. I can't wait to see it. Um, and I'm supporting, you know, uh, Mr. Camera Junkie, who was just on the podcast. This is an awesome shirt that just came in the mail. Um, I don't know if Preston So sent this to me or if he sent this to me because I had originally ordered one and because it was 100% cotton, which I hate, didn't really fit well. So they resent this one with his new like gold and black, which is just is my colors. I, li I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Let me hide this window and we're going to get into um, let's get into it. So black magic pocket cinema cameras. We're gonna talk about the build. I gotta move. I gotta move some stuff around. So I have trays with all all the gear because there's just not enough space to do this um, right here. So let's do this. First up, we got of course the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. I highly recommend if you're gonna buy a Blackmagic camera, the you know unless you have a bunch of Micro Four Thirds lenses, just go with. A 6k skip the 4k because if you're using ef lenses and then you got to get a speed booster i mean basically for the price of a speed booster and the 4k you're already getting a 6k brand new or you're spending more than you could getting it used which this one is used because i'm my main one is well i'm i'm, I'm talking to you on the main one right here so this one i bought used it didn't come with a lens cap so of course you got to get um you gotta get a lens cap and if I'm, you're, if you have to get a lens cap you might as well get the blue condor one because this scene seems awesome it locks in place really really nice metal it's it's a nice lens cap so um but they are a little expensive for a lens cap so you got to make the decision on whether you want to spend the money uh on a lens cap or you can just go with the plastic one but it looks really cool i like it anyway we're not going to get into the specs, specs on the camera. There's plenty of videos on that. This is all about how I build out uh, my rig. So, of course, we got to put a lens on it. Typically, um, I would use the the Sigma 18 to 35, but that's that's what I'm using right now. So we're just going to use my one of my other lenses for this, which is a which one is this? This is a Tokina 11 to 16, um, which is really nice. That because this is a, a you know, super 35 sensor, sort of. Uh, having 11 on, on a focal range, just uh, you can get such nice wide shots, which is which is really, really helpful. Uh, especially, you know, for me doing real estate, I shoot all my real estate videos on this now. And so I needed something really wide. So there we go. 
I might have jumped the gun a little bit putting the lens on because let's talk about cages. I have two different cages because I have two different cameras, but also for different situations. So I use Tilta cages for the Black Magic, and I have the half cage and the full cage. Why, why two cages? Um, well, let me tell you, this cage is a lot easier to take the camera out of if I want to throw it on a gimbal real quick and really lighten the load and just take it off the rig completely. I don't have to take off the lens. I can just unscrew the screws and it comes right off. So that's why I like the half cage. I will use the half cage for the rig if I know I'm gonna be do doing gimbal work. So I can just easily remove it because with the full one, you basically, you know, depending on the lens you have, not with this one, so that worked. Um, but if you're using a bigger cinema lens, like, like this one, um, you're not gonna be able to take the cage off without without taking the lens off. So that's why I use the half cage because some of these bigger cinema lenses, you, it just, you cannot take the cage off if the lens is on. So you gotta take off the lens. It's just, it's more of a hassle. So that's why I'll use the half cage if I'm doing gimbal work. But if I'm not, if I'm going straight handheld, which I prefer to do, um, then we're using uh, the full cage. So. Let's go ahead and put this on. We'll get all the screws off. What I wanna to mention too, I think which is really important to note when you're building a cage, um, and this is an important lesson that I've learned, is you don't really wanna mix and match uh, rig parts. Meaning if you're using a tilt -a cage don't get small rig accessories. Um, if you're using a, a uh, small rig cage, don't get Tilta accessories. Did I say that right? All right, I think I covered that. But, and the, and the reason for that is because even though the, the, the screw mounts and everything are the same size, um, the holes on the cage don't necessarily match up with the accessory uh, mounting holes. So even though they're the same size, they don't, they don't necessarily match up. And I've noticed that when I've tried to mount some small rig stuff on this and vice versa on my small rig cages, when I try to mount some Tilta stuff, um, I haven't, it's been more difficult because even though everything's the same size, they don't perfectly line up. And I, I mean, that's kind of smart on their part, right? You, they want to keep you in the ecosystem. So I choose to go with small rig. I mean, uh, Tilta because I just like their stuff. Um, and really, you know, there's been some beef with small rig and some creators doing doing work for them. So if I'm going to spend my money, I'm going to spend it on someone that doesn't hassle creators and, uh, you know, pays them what they're due when they're doing uh, sponsored content for them. Anyway, if you know, you know. So you got to make sure everything's lined up. We'll get it all screwed in. And then we'll check back in with you guys in the chat. There we go. We got our cage. This is really like the base of the whole rig because this is what everything will attach to. Let's check back in with the chat. Um, <laughs> Dr. Elo getting his uh, gear acqu acqu eh, acquisition syndrome going. Um, Coffee Talk Tech. I love gas. Yes, we all do. Leo, if you're shooting anamorphic often, I would say the 4K is a better option since are a lot more affordable uh, anamorphic lenses for micro micro four thirds. That is true, and even with the with the Siri Siri lenses, whatever they're called, um, the anamorphic ones, uh, they're EFM mounts, I believe. So they actually don't don't even work on here anyway. So uh, yeah, if you're if you're shooting anamorphic, then micro four thirds definitely. Um, there are kind of ways to cheat that now though, right? Like uh, I, I had a video where I have like an accessory for the, that screws onto the back of the Sigma 18 to 35 and gives you that anamorphic like flare look. And um, there's other, other like filters you can put on if you want that look, if you're using EF lenses. Uh, Paul Feinberg's here, what's up, dude? How's it going in Florida? How's the weather? Hopefully it's good. Roger. Do you shoot all manual with the camera? The AF isn't the best as I understand it. Yes, AF is non, is 
non-existent. It's it's touch to focus. So like right now I'm talking to you guys before the setup, you know, I'll make sure I'm in focus on the Blackmagic app and I can just hit the focus button and it'll focus on me once, but it's not gonna like track. If I move way back here, it, it'll eventually go out of focus. It's, it's not going to change. So yeah, it's great for talking heads. If you're moving a lot, you gotta learn how to pull focus. You gotta learn cinematography and not just rely on autofocus. Um, but if you need it, then this definitely is not the camera for you. But the image that comes out of the Blackmagic is one of the best images. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. Sony wins, hashtag one time at camera camp, LOL. Still fun uh, to see how you set up your gear. Nice stuff, dude. Thanks, dude. Thanks. Um, a lot of the stuff that I'm using here, they make for any other camera rig. And I think when you're building a rig, a lot of the stuff that goes into this will work with, I mean, not the specific parts, but the, the method behind them and why you use them will work with any, any other camera. Um, all right, so what are we gonna do next? We have our cage. Let's, well, of course, let's go with, uh, let's go with the top handle. So again, tilt the top handle. I absolutely love this top handle. It comes off and locks in super, super easy. And just, you don't even need a tool. It just, it just already has a mount. You just twist it down, okay? So, you know how I mentioned that like I only use tilted accessories? Well, I kind of lied. I, I do use a couple small rig accessories with this build out. And you'll see, and you'll see why like they're kind of universal um, because they don't have anything to do with the mount. All right, so now storage wise, I don't shoot to a CFast car because well, well, they're expensive and SSDs are a lot cheaper. So I have my SSD holder, which will screw right into the top right here. put my top handle too far up. And yes, our, this is the Coda Stealth. We did a little live stream about it um, a week or so ago where uh, the founder of Coda was, was on the stream as well and we kind of talked about it. It's really cool. You should go check it out. I love it. I mean, it just blends in really nice. Um, the only thing that I don't like is I can't like, I mean, you're supposed to plug it in like this, but like I was using my um, my SE Dynamite, I had it just plugged back into the back of the Roadcaster and I, I kind of like that. So it wasn't in because it was red. Um, this doesn't bother me because it's black, but it'd still be nice to plug it in. It just, it's a too wide to plug into the back. Um, and yes, Paul, SSDs are the way to go. So the T5, um, don't get a T7. Lesson learned. I, I tried that when I first got my, like over a year ago when I got my, um, my first, uh, 6k, it, it didn't work. It does. It just, it's not compatible, even though it's faster, it doesn't work. Um, so T fives are the way they go. And you know, you just can slide this in and then you are good to go. Sort of, we got to plug it in, right? So on my other cable, if you get If you get the tilted cage, I think these come with it. Um, this is the the, uh, the USB C um, in their right angle, so they're super nice, and they have like little mounts, so you can just screw them in to the side of the camera. So one will go into the camera. And this little screw will make sure that it stays plugged in. And then the cages have this little like cable management kind of built in. So it kind of holds it in place so it's not moving around. And then it goes into the front. And you can screw it in too. This one is a little tough. I have like a little screwdriver that I can use to screw it in, but it makes it super nice and secure. You never have to worry about it getting pulled on and then like losing your shot because uh, your USB-C got disconnected. There we go. Um, and yeah, Paul, like it would be really cool if they fixed the T7 thing. Um, not a big deal. I just buy T5s. Uh, my T7, I use actually as like the 
the hard drive for my podcast where I keep all my podcast episodes and what I edit off of for the podcast, but all my T5s um, and they're marked. I label everything. Um, they're marked, you know, black magic pocket, send my camera 6k number one, number two, number three, um, battery life is absolutely horrible. Um, to be quite honest. So that's why you, you gotta, there's other battery options. And you may, you may be asking yourself like, okay, well, if auto focus sucks, if the battery life sucks, why is this such a great camera? You put up with those things and you find ways to work around them because the image is just, it's just that good. And black magic raw, like <laughs> is just amazing. It's, it's so good. All right. How's the music guys you digging it? This is my, like, this is my personal little, like, um, mix on epidemic because I save all the songs I like and instead of listening to Pandora or Spotify sometimes I'll just listen to Epi epidemic okay now let's talk about what's next we need a rail system to start building out everything so this uh, and if you wanted to see any of the parts that go into this it's it's linked down in the description check them out if you want whatever um, but it's there to help you guys out so this is the Tilta base plate for uh, 15 millimeter rods, and I use small rig rods. So this is this is the first small rig accessory of two that I use on this build out. Um, they just make really good rods. This is, I believe, the 16 inch set. Um, they can't. Okay, so they came with little things that screw in here, like little caps on each side. I took those, store them away, get rid of them, don't use them because. Every time you want to put something on the rods, you had to unscrew the caps because nothing would go on the caps. And I get it, like maybe it keeps stuff from sliding off, but just tighten your stuff down. Anyway, base plate with uh, the 15 millimeter rods for small rig, the 16 inch ones. And then of course, um, a tripod base plate so you can put it on a tripod if you need to. So the nice thing about this is it just slides. Oh, wrong size. Uh, it just slides right on and locks into place. So I just keep that, those rods in there all the time. And you know, we're rocking and rolling with the camera rig. So we can get everything mounted. Uh, let's do, let's talk about focus systems. So, Tilta accessories. We have a couple options when it comes to focus pulling, which you have to do because this is basically uh, manual focus. You're going to need a focus ring. So tilt and make some, there's some other options. I have it linked in the description. Uh, don't use those cheap bands that come with like your, um, your gimbal. I mean, you just have something extra flopping around and, and like the guys, these are $2 for a focus ring. Just look up the diameter that you need tilt it. Just Google your lens and put tilt a focus ring at the end. And usually something will pop up that tells you what size ring you need. Um, question from Peter. All right. Would you recommend using a cage or a cam if it's fixed on a desk mount as studio meeting cam 90% of the time? I mean, it really just depends on if, if you need to mount a bunch of stuff to it. If you don't need to mount a, mount a bunch of stuff to it, no. But if you want... If it's just not lining up, there's tons of mounting points. So you could mount your your plate onto the side of the camera and then mount it that way. I mean, there, the whole purpose of a cage is it gives you mounting options. So I would only use a cage if you need if you need mounting options. If you don't, there's no there's no reason for it unless you just think it looks cool. And there's nothing wrong with that. All right. So for focusing, a lot of people will use the nu uh, the Tilta Nucleus Nano. Am I saying that right? And this is a electronic system. So this will just slide straight on to the rails. Ooh, wrong one. Like so, turn that around. And if you're doing this, you're gonna need to power it. So the way you power it or put power to it is tilt a mix and I don't use I don't use the focus wheel that comes with it unless you're you're pulling focus um, unless someone else is pulling focus or you're pulling focus and someone else is using the camera or what this is really great for is if you're using uh, cinema glass 
manual lenses and you're doing you're doing a talking head like this and you want to focus just set this up and you know you can just make sure you're in focus so that's that's a real cheat and i think i got that from gerald undone so if you're using manual lenses this comes in really handy because you don't need to get up adjust check get up adjust check you can just see if you're in focus and just and just use this but if you want to go this route what i recommend is you get a side handle that Tilta makes and you power you, know, you get an NPF battery and that's going to be enough juice to power um, the the nano and it had the nano has a little cable you just slide this in right here bam and it's got a little focus pool right there you plug it in and to lighten things up you can take the the SSD off and it slides in right here you can see that there's a right here it can it can slide in right here so that's one option all right that's one option but I don't like using this option I only use this option if I'm I'm going really quick and I don't have a lot a lot of time to dial in focus it's just too many things can go wrong so why add more more things that can go wrong so this is an option this is what I started with Get this off, jeez. Hold up. Oh, come on. See what I'm talking about? This is why I don't use it. Because it can be in the butt sometimes. Oh, what? What is a lot here? Push the button. See what I'm talking about? That's why I don't use it. Okay. Here's the option I recommend. And this is also from Tilta. It's just quick and easy. And another reason I don't use this all the time is because if you're changing lenses, right? You gotta recalibrate it. And it can take a little bit of time. And if you're trying to go quick, you don't have time to recalibrate. So, Tilta. Mini follow focus, definitely the way to go. It's it's just way, way easier um, and way quicker. So this just slides right on. The reason I like this is because I don't have a ton of matching lenses where the, all the gears match up. So this just can adjust super quick. So if I wanted to, you know, Throw on, throw on the Helios. I can just mount that. Move this really quick, and changing focus is super simple. So you can just go to nearest focus, and these little metal tabs right here. You just set that, twist it down, go to infinity, set that. Perfect, super easy. Now you can get it moved, but super easy. Yep, we're good to go. The great thing about this is it makes it super easy if you're doing like product focus pools or if you're locked off and you're doing talent focus pools, you can set the focus on your, on your A, just move these little tabs real quick. On your B, move the tab really quick and it just makes it so much quicker and you can adjust the speed a lot easier than you can with electronic focus pool. This. It's so simple and it really is just, I think the best option for pulling focus on manual lenses, unless you need someone to do it remotely. If you're doing it yourself, this is just, it's the quickest. Okay, uh, Leo's gotta go. See you later, dude. Have fun doing whatever you're doing. If it's school or having fun, whatever it is, man. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for stopping by. Raphael in the house, finding a good rig that works uh, for you is trial and error process I found. That's right. So if you have suggestions on this, let me know. It is evolving all, all the time. And like I said, a different setup for different situations. I mean, that's not once, one rig's not gonna be perfect for everything. Um, and go go check out Raphael's stream he did earlier in the week because he had one that was really good about how to talk to clients. And I think it's something that a lot of creators struggle with. And he, he made some really good points. It was really, really good. And Coffee Talking Tech, 
Don't mind me. I'm <laughs> don't mind don't mind me. I'm eating lunch and watching. That's good, man. I'm still drinking my coffee. I need more. Maybe not. I'm talking a million miles an hour. Okay. So what are we gonna mount next? Okay. Let's battery. We need power, right? And the power on this thing sucks. So there is a kit you can get that comes like this. It comes with a V mount and it comes with a adapter plate with the cord built in. And so I love this. It's from Indie Pro. It'll be linked down in the bottom and it just slides right onto your rails. And another reason I went with the, the longer rails is just because I don't want, if I went with the shorter rails, like this would have to be mounted way up against the camera and I'm not using a port keys monitor, which I'd really like. Port keys monitors allow you to control the camera from the monitor. Um, so I need to, I don't, I'm not using one of those because they're expensive and uh, I don't have the money to buy one yet. So uh, I need to get to the back of my, the back to the camera to, to adjust stuff. So having the longer rails allows me to, to move this back and put it down like so. And I can still get to the camera. So we'll plug that in for power. And even though like the batteries on these suck, I mean, even if they were good, I would still use a V-mount just because you don't have to think about it. Just all day power, no matter what. And it can power your other accessories. So there we go. There's the battery. You can put it down. It adds weight too if you're doing handheld work. More weight, more stable. It's not gonna move around as much. So we're rocking and rolling, guys. This is this is looking good. Uh, kombucha, hey Jared, um, and Coffee Talk Tech. Fancy seeing you here. Yes, Coffee Talk Tech. Love seeing the crew in the house. Okay, what do we need next, guys? Well, got to use a monitor because this is blocked. I don't always use a monitor, but it really is the best option. Um, like I said, Port Keys makes one that's really good. Um, you can use um, an Atomos if you want. I don't really recommend it. Uh, well, I mean, I take that back. Uh, a Shinobi is great. Shinobis are fantastic monitors. This is the Ninja 5. Um, the reason I have this is for my Nikon camera so I can shoot uh, ProRes RAW. It's a little overkill and adds unneeded weight. Uh, so I don't use this typically, but it is a great monitor. I just use a cheap monitor. I just need to be able to see what I'm doing. So I just use a uh, five inch uh, fill world monitor. It's cheap, it's all I need. I just need to see what I'm shooting because I dial in all the settings uh, before the shot. You can, you know, uh, dial everything in on the back of the camera. And the nice thing about using monitors is with your your function buttons on top of the black magic, you can hit one and it can like, it doesn't, how do I want to say this? You can set your function buttons to affect either the camera or the monitor. So if I just want to see grids on the monitor, but not on the camera, you can set that up, which is really, really cool. So the second of two small rig accessories that I use is just a monitor mount because it's universal. I already had it and uh, it works. This one tilts and swivels. Hey, hey, hey Tom Bucks in the house. He was podcasting. Well, uh, or the Enthusiasm Project po podcast or the Ska cast or the Ska podcast, whatever we're calling it. Anyway, so the two, the second of two small rig accessories that I use, just the monitor mount and just slides right in the top of the top handle. Tighten it down. You can tilt, you can swivel. So you can, you know, if you're shooting like this, it's a little bit of a pain to have it straight on because then you're going like this. So you can just swivel, see what you're shooting. which is really nice. Takes some getting used to looking at that angle when you're shooting, but um, it's really nice to be able to put it any direction you want. Okay, we need to plug that in. So we got, of course, full HDMI. I know, oh man, I, did grab, I grabbed the wrong cable. Hold up. All right, I don't have it on me, but uh, full HDMI to uh, the camera, which is nice. I know that's a pet peeve of Tom's. So full HDMI for the win. Okay, now we need audio. 
we need audio because the onboard cameras on here are good for scratch audio and I've I've made some mistakes where I've had to use that and it happens but the best thing to do is have a mini XLR so why not use an XLR microphone so I have a uh, I forget is, I think this is from Rycote is that is that the name of the company um, makes this mount and if it's good enough for um, Rhodes microphones, I figured it would be good enough for my rig. So this just tightens down. I like this mount. Um, it's a little finicky, like getting it tight enough so it doesn't move around. Um, so you gotta use, sometimes I'll use a pair of pliers just to, to tighten it. And then my mic of choice is the Rode NTG5. So let's grab that. Throw a dead cat on there, and then we'll grab our our blue condor XLR to mini XLR. Plug that in. How's this camera angle looking? Can we see anything here? There we go. We'll plug that in. And we'll turn it around. And there we go. We're all plugged in there. And we're off to building our cinema rig. Now, the nice thing is, is this records uh, audio to the left channel and to the right channel. I mean, you don't have to, but you can. So that's a nice option. So we're gonna add another uh, input for the audio. So we have our XLR shotgun microphone, and then I will always, always use the Rode Wireless Go, which is really, just comes in handy. Take that, take the receiver. Oh, that's a transmitter. Take a receiver, plug that in, and then we'll just plug it in. The camera, and then honestly, guys, I don't, I don't even mount, like you can mount it back to the top handle, but I need that space for my easy rig. So honestly, I will just strap it to the USB cable on the side like this. It's so lightweight that nothing's gonna happen to it. So it just kind of dangles right there. Totally fine. Totally, totally fine. Let's check back in with the chat. Uh, Tom was recording for the enthusiasm part. You can't even see my face right now. <laughs> uh, Kevin Cox, what's up, man? Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping in. Raphael, if you work with clients, having a wireless preview a monitor makes you look like a superhero. It really does. Um, I need to get um, some Hollyland transmitters. I, I don't have any right now, so yeah, I'm not I'm not that upgraded yet. Usually, I'm I'm a one man crew and I'm just rocking and rolling. So, uh, but I do want that one for clients and two so I can start having, um, you know, an assistant pull in focus if I need to. And Coffee Talk Tech is a fan of the NTG5. It is a great microphone. I love it. So we have two audio options. We have our shotgun mic, and now we have the Rode Wireless Go. So you can just clip this onto the talent, or you can, of course, lav them up. I really, I'm not a big fan of the lav. Like, this this, this is great. I love just clipping it on them. And if you don't want to clip it, Rode makes these little magnets that just, just go right on, which is really nice. And then... You can magnet the microphone to the shirt or behind a collar or whatever. So that's a great option. We are just about done with the rig, guys. So we have power. We need power to the monitor. So that's the nice thing about using V-mount. And the nice thing about using a like a power plate. I don't know if that's what this is called, but this has the cable built in that goes to the camera. So you're not using the D-tap on the V-mount. So we're just going to take a D-mount D-tap to DC I'm gonna wrap that around and plug that into our monitor so now we have power to the monitor and we don't have to use an extra battery this one battery will power everything as you can see the monitor just turned on you're good to go um, coffee talk says says I have the Hollyland 300 pro they are amazing for the money they are guys they, they are amazing I really want I really want one, but 
priorities. Sometimes that money's got to go to other places. Um, all right, so the last thing, guys, the very last thing that we need to do is we need ND, right? Like, because I don't want to shoot at F8. Um, though shooting wide open isn't always the best. Like, I actually would shoot at F4 all day long, all day long. So for an ND, if I'm, like I said at the beginning, if I'm using the half cage so I can easily just take the camera right out of the rig, which is a great option, then that's that's what I'll use if I'm gonna do gimbal work. So I can take the camera out of the whole rig setup really, really quick. Um, then I'll just throw on like a variable ND. But I like using, I forget what, the, what is this called? Like the base camp series from, from Polar Pro. So this is nice. Uh, because it's got a flag on it and um, I just find the filters in this system are just way more higher quality than is that it's not really good English is it way more higher quality <laughs> um, than like a uh, than a VND so this system's great it just you put on your your little mount you even see anything it's getting really crowded and we got our little mount and then this just goes right here like so tightens down that easy just tightens down with this thing right here and we can just bam we're good to go and the nice thing is like if you're not shooting putting this down really quick to protect the front super quick so i like this and i have the two to five stop in there and then you just adjust right here on the top you just spin uh, you probably can't even see that but you right here there's a uh uh, CPL and you just spin that to adjust to adjust your ND Well guys This this is the rig. This is it. This is this is my go-to Setup for when I'm going on a client shoot and um, it's really heavy. So even if you're not using um, Well, let's be honest a easy rig isn't made to <laughs> a lot of people will get this confused an easy rig does not is not meant to stabilize your footage. It helps take the strain off your arms and your back. And it, it does help a little bit, right? It can kind of like just keep you right there and you get that nice handheld look without it, without it going like this, but it's not what it's meant for. So um, I will use the easy rig if I'm getting tired. Otherwise I like just butt it up like a shotgun and just, and just hold it like this and, and rock and roll. So that that's the setup guys everything's linked down in the description if you want to check it check it out and like i said um using the the tilta mini follow focus it's just way better than the nano because it it you can switch out to to other lenses that don't mat, the focus gears don't match up just way 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 quicker here well, let's let's do it so um just take take off what we just put on Loosen up the follow focus, move it down a little bit. And all we got to do, take off the lens, put our lens cap back on. Let's go with the 14. Set our infinity real quick. And we'll set our other side of the focus. Oh man, this one's really, really far. Hold up. Here we go. I'm saying, like, you get what I'm saying. This is just way, way easier. I don't even think we need to set anything on this one, which is really nice because the focus pulls so much. Just gonna rock and roll like that. But that's way quicker than having to use the Nano. Like, just way, way quicker. So. There we go. Rocking and rolling. Everything's turning. All right, guys. Well. That is the stream. 
Oh, we have a bunch of chats. Hold up, hold up. I'm missing a bunch of stuff, guys. Sorry. Let's check back in with you guys. Um, Tom says he's a sucker for map boxes, even even without fil filters. They just look cool. They do. And let's be honest, guys. If you show up to a shoot with something like this, your client is going to be way more confident in you. And hopefully <laughs> your skills live up to that confidence. Um, but they're going to be way more confident than if you just showed up with, um, you know, a mirrorless small camera. Uh, should be go to Peter setup. Great setup. This looks like an amazing setup. Yeah, guys, it works for me. Um, it may not work for you. Like it just, it depends. Every it just depends on your shooting style. It depends what you're shooting. I can't stress enough that like, when you're building a camera rig, build the rig for the job. And this is kind of like my handheld setup. But like I mentioned a th thousand times already, if I'm doing gimbal work and I need handheld work at the same time, I will definitely use the ha half cage instead of the full cage. It will tweak some of the mounting options because you're missing this whole side with the microphone. So the microphone goes over here. Um, the SSD honestly will probably get gaff taped onto something so I can have room for the microphone and you just kind of got to roll with it. So yeah, that's pro for sure. Appreciate it, man. Um, it, it takes a lot of work to, to dial everything in. And like Raphael said, it's, it's trial and error to see what works for you. This works for me. I really enjoy the weight of this camera rig because it allows me to really do a lot of handheld uh, work and not have to worry about too much post stabilization the heavier your rig is the less you're going to be going like this like you can just hold this super super sturdy which is really nice um anyway like i mentioned earlier we launched launched merch for the podcast so if you want to check it out here is my there we go so go check it out link in the description i'm really stoked on the merch but i hope you guys um have enjoyed uh, the build did make sure you subscribe to the uh, to the channel hit the bell so you get notified and uh, give this video a like I really appreciate it check everything out down in the description and well guys I will catch you on the next stream I really wanted to do something like this uh, just chill listen to beats and build a camera rig with you guys all right I hope you guys enjoyed it I'll catch you in the next one